Hey everyone, welcome back to Awesomer Pop! You're probably wondering what we're doing today. A lot of random stuff here. We'll be doing a fun science experiment, but I'll go into more details once Marshall gets here. Whoa! What's going on here? Not used to seeing electrical wires and stuff. Hey Marshall, I called you over here because we're going to be making a battery today, but it's not the battery you're familiar with. The power source will be very interesting. However, if we do it right, we should be able to power this digital clock, We'll be able to power this LCD display clock as well. This is a sound chip we can test out. And we can also power up this lighthouse. We'll be testing all four of these items today. We also have a couple of plastic and paper cups. Inside we can find some protective covers. We get eight yellow connection wires. And inside this bag, we'll find copper and magnesium circuit boards. I didn't introduce our power source yet, but these are all the items we'll need to make our homemade battery. I'm still a bit confused, but making a battery sounds fun. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Alright, let's get started. Okay, here's the first step to making our battery. We need to grab one copper board and one magnesium board. Now we need to connect the boards with the connecting wire, which is this yellow wire I showed earlier. Let's pull on this end and have the metal wires on this side go through this hole. This is the copper board. Twist to tighten. Perfect. Now let's do the same thing with this magnesium board. Afterwards, wrap some tape around the wires. Okay, we got step one complete. So the first thing we're going to try to power is this digital clock. On this clock, you'll see two wires, a black wire, which is a negative terminal, and the red wire, which is a positive terminal. The black wire must always connect to the more reactive metal. So we're going to insert these wires through the magnesium plate. Just like we did earlier, we're going to twist to connect. So iron, aluminum, magnesium, nails, and etc. are reactive metals that go well with the black wire. The positive terminal, or the red wire, must always connect to the less reactive metal, which is the copper board for us. And any kind of copper, copper alloy, gold plating, various coins and etc. are less reactive metals that go well with the red wire. Wow, that was a lot of information to take in, but I'm keeping up with all of this. Now that we set up the wires with the metals, what are we going to use to power up our clock? Don't be shocked, but we're going to be using a tomato and a lemon to power up all of our items today. Haha, <laughs> very funny. You probably wanted me to get all excited and say, Whoa, that's awesome! We can power it up using tomatoes and lemons? But I won't be fooled. Oh, Marshall. Just watch and see what happens. You will be saying those exact words in a few minutes. Alright, we'll start by using this tomato. Just need to cut this in half. So basically, the common items required for these experiments are the electrolyte, the positive electrode, and the negative electrode. We have our positive and negative electrode, and this tomato is our electrolyte. Let's start by sticking the negative electrode in one tomato. And we'll stick the positive electrode in the other tomato. Now let's bring out our clock, and we just have to stick the opposite wires in each tomato. This will create a constant flow. Think of it as a racetrack where the ions are going around in circles freely. Mess this part up, and you're gonna get a collision. Here we go! Boom! Isn't science amazing? So I explained this a bit earlier, but our tomato, which is our electrolyte, is our power source. We can actually use beverages, juices, and different fruits as our electrolyte. Earlier, I said think of this as a racetrack. So let's say our magnesium plate is the start and finish line. Ions, which are the race cars, have been released due to the metals reacting with the electrolyte. Now our ions will go speeding down the black racetrack, entering the digital clock, and then speeding out onto the red racetrack. They will then transfer over to the yellow track, and the first lap is complete. The ions will basically go around in circles until the power source is gone. But yeah, just like that, we're able to power a clock. And remember, you can't have two of the same metals in one power source. So you have to have a positive and a negative on each side. Wow, that is fascinating. I'm so impressed. Can we see if it works with the lemon too? I'm really curious. Of course! Let me start by cutting this in half.
Okay, so our lemon is our electrolyte. Now let's insert our positive and negative electrodes. Alright, this time we're going to test out the sound chip. Let me quickly set this up. Here we go! Uh-oh. The red wire is disconnected, so we don't have a complete circuit. Let me quickly attach this. There we go. Do you hear that? Here, let me bring it closer to the mic. That's pretty awesome, right? Now let's power up this display clock. Follow the same steps as before. Perfect. As you can see, tomatoes and lemons are perfect power sources. My goodness, my mind is blown right now. I can't believe we can use fruits to power up items. I can't wait to see the next experiment. Wait, what is the next experiment? This looks intense. This is the last experiment. We'll be using a few water bottles to power this lighthouse. Wait, what? We can use water as a power source too? That's so awesome! I can't wait to see this! Before we add the metals into the liquids, we have to remove the caps and add the protective covers. Safety always comes first. So the amount of water needed will be different for each object. To power up the lighthouse, three small water bottles should be fine. Give me a second while I set this up. I know we're inserting our metals into liquid this time instead of fruits, but the process is the same. Just make sure you have positive and negative electrodes in each water bottle. Can't really see. Here's a closer look. Woo! We got it to light up. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, I learned a lot today. I don't think I'll ever forget this lesson. I'm going home right now to try more experiments. This was really cool. Glad you had fun while learning. Science is awesome, right? Now go home and have some more fun. Awesome or pop fans, thank you so much for watching. We can't do this without you. If you're new to the channel and became a fan, click that subscribe button for more awesome stuff. And if you want to be the first person to watch our next video, hit that notification bell to have a chance. See ya.